Hey there, this is Jonathan. Welcome to the Music Inventor Podcast, Episode 2. I'd like to invite you to check out the Instagram page at music underscore inventor and the blog at johnthemusicinventor.blogspot.com. And that's John spelled J-O-H-N. So today we are going to be talking about what a musical background is, and I will be sharing my own musical background at the end. So what is a musical background? A musical background is the story of how you've come to know music and participate in music. And it's a very common question that you're going to get asked if you go to a music college. You'll get asked probably during the audition and once you actually start taking classes. And you're going to be asked by your fellow students and more importantly by professors and teachers. It's a really good idea to have a well thought out response to this question. What is your musical background? Because whenever your ensemble instructor says, tell me your story, they don't mean tell me the story of your life. They mean tell me the story of your music. And it would be really good if you're not like, oh, well, I just sort of started playing piano and I think it's cool. So yeah, I'm doing it for college. Yeah, that's not going to leave a positive impression on whoever asked. I mean, and your answer is going to leave some sort of a lasting impression. So you're going to want it to be a positive impression. So that's why I'm saying have a well thought out response for the question. So let's get into how you sort of come up with your musical background. So you want to start with some basic facts of your musical history. So tell them about your primary instrument and how many years you've been taking lessons. And my main recommendation here would be keep it simple. No one cares about your 27 bassoon teachers that you've had to go through that have all moved to Switzerland to study economics. That should not be included in your musical background that you share with people when they ask unless they specifically ask about what teachers you've had. But whenever they just ask for you to tell your musical story, leave out the nitpicky details. The next thing you want to mention would be any impressive pieces of information about yourself. So these would include important performances, competitions, and awards. So just pick out maybe two or three things that have happened in your musical career so far that are noteworthy and share them and do it with the right attitude. Don't be boastful, don't be prideful, but take ownership of the big accomplishments that you've made because it'll help the other person see what type of musician you are and how you're serious about your music. Which brings me to the next point. You're gonna want to next share your musical and life goals. So basically for this, you're just gonna tell the person why you're a serious musician. Now for your own benefit here, think of something original and sincere. Don't give a response like, I want to help people through music. Because the thing is, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wanting to help people through music. And at the core of it, that's what a lot of us want to do. The problem is that that's the sort of answer that you would give while you're in high school before you've really focused in on exactly what you want to do and how you want to do it. By the time you reach college, you should be at least a little bit more specific than that. So tell the person how you're planning to help people through music or whatever, whatever your goal is, be original with your answer, be specific. And this is very important because it's the last thing you're going to tell the person and it's probably going to stick with them the most. They're going to sort of remember the other stuff, but what's really going to stick with them is why you're doing what you're doing. So next, I will share with you my musical background. At a very early age, I would go to the piano and start pecking out little melodies and stuff. And I was always waving my arms around to music as if I was conducting. And so at age eight, my parents got me piano lessons. And so I've been taking piano lessons for about 10 years and cello lessons for about eight. And I also became interested in conducting and composition at around age 15. So I've been working on those skills as well. And I am now attending Florida State University as an organ performance major. 
I have composed and arranged many pieces for small ensemble, and they have been performed, some of them multiple times. And this past summer at music camp, the orchestra played an original composition by me, so that was a big deal. My long-term goal is to be an orchestra conductor and help people learn to experience and understand music. So that's it. That's my musical background, and it took all of about a minute for me to share it with you. You can probably see at this point why having this story figured out is a really important tool when you're going into an environment like a music college. So today we have gone over the importance of having a well thought out musical history which you can share with anyone who wants to know. The process of figuring out why you do what you do can be a very important experience. You may begin to live your life with increased purpose, or you might even realize that you are on the wrong path for what you actually want to do. In any case, having these things figured out is a great idea, and I hope you will take some time to figure out your own musical background, your own story. Alright, and that wraps up this episode of the Music Inventor Podcast. I just wanted to take a second and say that... I'm aware that there are places like YouTube that offer libraries of free professionally recorded music and sound effects that you can use on your podcast. And the reason I'm not using those and why you just heard a pretty poorly recorded guitar backing thing is because I want to do this pretty much on my own and figure out the best ways to record voice and instruments and stuff. And I don't really want to use stock music and stuff that you can just download for free. I appreciate that it's there, but um, I, I want to figure out how to, do it, how to do it on my own. And um, But I'm not going to not put out content just because I'm not the best at recording acoustic guitar. Or piano, as you can hear. Anyways, thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next episode of the Music Inventor Podcast.